the number 75, the, the Black Tree Race Crew and GTEs, because he's got a little bit of a fight in his hands with Stevens now. Porsche chasing the Corvette. As Thomas looking left and right, he goes to the right side. He's got a little bit of an overlap, but he's early on the oh, break. Some ghost contact between them is going to shove the Corvette off track. Uh, so hail in the number 75. That puts him up to 11th in class. And we just had the car go upside down. And we paid a pack 15. The pack 3 base crew car has rolled over. And it's getting going again. A lot of damage to the 75 Porsche. But it's back on its wheels and it can keep going. Guys, welcome to round four of the rescheduled three hours of Italy. Uh, glad you're all here. Appreciate you making uh, the changes to your lineup as you needed to to, to make the rescheduled race. Um, obviously, today's race and the duels this weekend and the 500 next weekend are all we're all doing that for for John. I'm sure most of you have seen the, the announcements and the blogs and and the Facebook posts and everything and. We'll try to keep you updated the best we can. Um, appreciate anybody running the, the hashtag racing for John decal on their cars. Appreciate uh, all the donations. Appreciate everybody running extra laps next week during the Daytona 500. Anyway, enough of that. Um, race rules are, are very similar, uh, are the same as they have been uh, for the last several weeks. And we do, in, in fact, carry over the uh, incident limits, which I think was successful. Last week, so we'll have 40, 40 X limit before DQ. At 20, you get your first drive through, and at 30, you get a second drive through. Otherwise, uh, race rules are the same. Uh, caution expectations are the same. And uh, big track should expect it to be a pretty clean race. Um, thanks. Good luck.
wenn irgendwas passiert, kein Kopf machen. Wir sind alle da. Aber da brauchst du dir, ja, da habe ich auch einen Tom und Thorsten gesagt, ja. Wenn er schlechte Laune hat, dann soll ich einfach nur die Replays von mir <lacht> Ja, aber wie gesagt, hey, im Rennen bitte nicht zu quatschen. Ja, ja, oder du musst, wenn, du musst wenn, dann wenn, einfach wenn, dort, klar und deutlich, wenn das zu viel ist oder so, einfach sagen, Ruhe. Ja. Dann, oder wenn dann nur an Punkten quatschen, wie auf irgendwelche Geraten oder ja, so. Oder wenn du hin. Infos brauchst, einfach sagen, einfach sagen, ich weiß ja selber, wie das ist im Auto, dass man da unter Stress steht und sowas. Das nimmt dir niemand übel, ich steige auch nicht. Das Wichtigste ist, egal was passiert, mach dich nicht vor. Du machst mir richtig gut. <lacht> Kriegt man schon hin. Hauptsache der NMP ist beim Fernen. Das ist das Einzige. Also, aber da, da ist zum Beispiel, es kann passieren, dass die dich abräumen, ohne dass du schuld bist. Das ist schon so viel passiert. Oder, oder wie, wie beim, beim, beim äh, Tommy. Dass ich hier ein GT4 querlegen, du kannst nicht mehr, ja. kannst du mehr ausweichen. Ja, ja. Dann müssen wir halt reparieren und wir geben halt nicht auf, außer wenn die Karre nicht mehr brauchbar ist. So, And speaking about LMP2, they are once again in their pit cycle. Uh, second place, Texas PC Motorsport Athena in pit lane oh, as we're on the replay right now. And how much just, 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 just took over at that car as they are exiting the pit lane for the uh, uh, car. Curiously, though, they spun before they came into pit lane, down into Parabolica. They went completely around, and it, there was no way around that was completely driver error. So we have seen a car experience some problems here late. We talked about how good the pit stop is, but it's starting to unravel a little bit for them. Yeah. I mean, even with that racing car back in, now. Sorry, go ahead. They had 12 Five seconds over third place once they crossed the start finish line. So, yes, they had their spin, but still, they are way out there. And uh, yeah, it is just that Fitzy and Monza that's just incredible. Again, Monza still in the lead. Spinning, and I knew that there was that spin for the Texas Fitzdie car because it just seemed weird that they would pit because they didn't hit anything that I could see unless they got some damage that wasn't visible and had to come in off sequence. So, well, going back to what we said at the beginning of the broadcast, where we expect it's about 75 ish lap, uh, laps, I think they have started to actually calculate backwards now and say all right we are lap 41 we are early on the pit stop we're so far ahead we can actually go in and take the pit stop now and still be good on the pit cycle i think that's what they did here with that spin from johnson or maybe he just got so tired that they said all right you know what i can't drive anymore uh, i'm gonna fall asleep if i have to drive another lap around the oval and that's why they came in and maybe cover off those cautions I see a couple are GTE spitting. Tom Huggin for the Mach 1 eSports car gives away third place momentarily and returns onto the track as we keep watching this fight for what is now second place. And ah, our leader is in. The Aries car is coming along and Jack Styles has been in this thing since the beginning of the race. I have to imagine they're going to hand this over now. 
Yeah, probably should happen here. Jack Styles is going to head yep. over the car as Cameron Dance also writes some stuff into chat accidentally about how he sets up his car. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, well, uh, and I don't think you can erase that in the sim. <laughs> no, you cannot. By the way, if you're wondering, it's from the air B bar and rear air B bar, which I mentioned. Five and five, and the brake buys a 48%. You didn't have to read it out for the entire world. <laughs> but okay, it's already out there, you know. Sam Rausch immediately with the Santas while having the racing team work, he can. Uh, but let's be honest, you, these guys are so far ahead. Uh, but nobody can really stop them unless they have some troubles because at the time of the pit stop, they are a little bit ahead of the third place car, which is also a bit late in Wolf Sims, but basically as well. Now, in the meantime, Harris and Cologne also pit. Yes. Our leader in the GTE is handed over that top spot. The Calvert Dynamics 188 is in. You can see Cameron Dance back returning. Challoner in the team iRacing car now. He's the hot shoe between himself and Roush, so this is going to be fun to watch. 188 as James Walker hopping into the drum. Actually, he got in last in, I should say. He returns to the track. Waiting for Cologne to finish his stop. And Bill Joey Haynes, who's hopped into the Evolved Obsidian number six. Goes the evolved okay. car. He's out and moving. By the way, the camera dance is already is already going through the first chicane. Stadler halfway on the back stretch of the oval, and third place has just entered the oval. That's how much of a difference there is between first, second, and mm -hmm. third. Third, basically at this point, is about half a lap behind first place. And we we had had a, a, sorry, we had a significant loss between third and fourth mm -hmm. in our LMP2s. Uh, the, the Obsidian car gained about two and a half seconds. Uh, so Cologne, unfortunately, did not come out smelling like roses on that one. He's got some work to do now. Yeah, that is down to a pizza that's one second longer. And pit lane in general is what, two seconds longer for Cologne. So looks like he had a bad pit and she has a bad pit. Yep. Back, it's three seconds now. My goodness. That's not what they wanted to see here towards the end of the race. Again, we don't know though if a caution will happen. And that could also change everything. So who are we waiting on for second stops? I see the Evolve Simsport SPB. Did they just actually come out of there? Pit stop this last lap? I think they did. Yeah, Mill Wayne in that car. Uh, up at the top after taking only a 17, 18 second stop. Yeah, here we go is one of the battles we have as Blanchett once again passes half. I think that's the third time he's done that this round, but he keeps going wide at Della Rosa. But uh, I just want to make a note that the top five in GT4 could fit in that gap between the, the leaders that we have in LMP2. The top six is covered by about 40 seconds, and that's saying something considering the fact that our sixth place GT4 car lost the connection earlier on in the race. Now, I don't know how off sequence they are, but, uh, but it's still impressive the uh, tightness that we have seen them on the GT4 car. So, four seconds between Stevens and Nichols, and then you, you can see it in the bottom left of your screen right now 46 seconds covering pretty much most if not all of the GT4 cars still running. The other wild thing about that is all previous three races, the GT4 cars wound up getting separated by multiple laps in some cases. So this is wild that we've gone the complete reverse. And I wonder if the slipstream has anything to do with that, allowing them to kind of keep in touch with one another. 
Yeah, I think that's a lot to do with that. But <laughs> I, I, I also want to make a note that I don't think we're going to see a caution. I think this race has been so, uh, a lot cleaner than any of us were anticipating. I think they're going to go green to the end. And that's been a, a positive trend. We got some from some data from the organizers after last race that round two they went from 1,500 incidents to 700 incidents in round three. So uh, I think they are heading in the right direction. Jimbo Pfeiffer getting in to the 105 Sector 5 Wild Blue Yonder car. Interesting thing about the GT4 class actually is that um, Stevens just has been able to just completely pull away from second place in Nichols because at this point in time the gap has uh, grown to six and a half seconds. As you can see right now down the bottom of your screen. So Stevens is most definitely quite the faster car and. He shows what Blanchard could have done because Blanchard has the same speed. Just he makes, has made thus far so many mistakes that he finds himself in fifth place rather than in first place. And they haven't even put in the pole sitter yet. Uh, the two cars, that have, uh, the two drivers that have driven this 178 car so far, but it was Johnson who qualified this car on pole. So uh, if he ends up taking the car over for the final yeah. stint, that's bad news for the rest of the field. Uh, let's head over to Christian Challoner here real quick, who's quickly approaching the number 42. David Saranzo and that Devotion Sim Racing purple car. And somehow Team iRacing had fallen down to seventh in that exchange. Remember, they were as high as fifth at one point. Now, also before this battle gets a little too heated, we want to take a moment. Many of you may have noticed up at the top of the screen uh, in, in our uh, tower there, Racing for John, hashtag Racing for John. For those of you not familiar, John King, of course, has been a major part of the major series over multiple years and, in fact, has had heavy involvement with the Kinetic Racing Team as well. Unfortunately, we recently had heard news that he has been fighting brain cancer. Unfortunately, has uh, decided that he no longer fight that fight, so he is uh, living the rest of his life, if you will, and we've been doing what we can to try and help with that and make it as comfortable and as possible. You know, so if you'd like to donate, we have a link in the text chat. Uh, and again, a lot of drivers also having that hashtag racing for John on their cars here today and their support of John King, who we all really miss. And I don't know if you're watching, John, but uh, it's been good to hear from you recently, and uh, we certainly miss you a lot out here. It's down to the inside, uh, overtaking Neil Gagon. That is Sir Lonzo getting up into fifth. This battle has caught up with two other cars, so we've now got uh, well, a three-car battle. Philip Brock is in the uh, switching car as uh, not no, He is currently down at 11 for lap long.
looked a little scary there. And the lower side is shorter, and he's going to get the spot here on the oval as Christian Schaliner is able to overtake Saronzo, but it's not done. There's a little bit of an overlap. Both of them having to split slower GT cars through a very antsy portion of the circuit. Even though he's holding low, look at this. Christian Schaliner showing him how it's done. You remember, he was a formal oval pro here on iRacing. Clearly knows a little bit on um, how to get, be fast around there, but coming off the corner, doesn't carry the speed. Here comes Saronzo back at him. He's fully ahead and lifting a little bit. Christian Challenger decides to save that fight for another day. And you don't think he can get up to third. I want to remind you, uh, Steph, that uh, Christian Challenger currently holds the record for most wins of anybody in the major series and is the only driver ever to have won more than one championship in the majors. So um, I wouldn't bet against him. Uh, I said he wouldn't get up to second, but he can. Ah, he second, up okay. To third. It's always seven seconds to third, so that's going to be easy for him. Um, and also, the argument with him being a pro uh, oval driver doesn't really count yet once because it's a right hand oval, and as we all know, it's the wrong way around for that. <laughs> yeah, I feel well, he's that not an American, though. Yeah, I feel like any driver has put on oval normally. But as much as he raises oval, you know, um, yeah. it's, it's, uh, yeah, I think he integrated it. Okay, so you've started beef with a Scot now here on the chance, and, and now you're going to have beef with, with a Brit. So you're just you're just trying to, to have the whole UK a, against you somehow. I mean, come on, like there is a political way in Atlantic. Meanwhile, he is fighting back. He's trying to come back at the Saronzo, and Saronzo getting checked up with Carlisle in front of him. He dodges out of the way just in time as uh, Gagon also goes through and it looks like uh, Philip and the number 18 going to duck off in the pit lane behind them. Here we go again as the 7 pulls in behind the 42. Will he get another pass on the over or is he going to wait? Mm -hmm. The drivers don't. They don't want damage on the bottom of the car. And look at that. Man, the slipstream, very powerful. It's Gagon gets back up, almost passing Christian Challenger, then deciding he doesn't want it here yet. much safer to run around there than in the first part. Now that time, Challenger did not fight. And if I know Christian, because I've worked alongside him in the booth a number of times, I get the sense that this is him saving fuel. Too good of a driver to this, for this to be an accident. Big slip up there from Yal, and he is going to drop a tenth or two behind that there. Just about an hour to go, and we're probably at a good spot here to take a short break ourselves. We're going to come back after this for the finale of round four in the Majors Team Endurance Challenge. Cameron Davis in Pitside Motorsports Aries car leads in the LMP2s. Ozzy Mill Wayne in the Ocean Sports SPB leads in the GTEs. And Brett Stephen leads in CMSRacing.com Team 1 for the GT4s. Don't go away.
Ich bin nicht wieder. Ich bin wieder da. Ich bin da. Ja! Ja! Aber wo sind die ganzen anderen Autos? Ich bin weg. Ich bin auch sehr gut. Oh, da hinten. LMP. Von hinten. Jupp. Und kommst du klar, ja? Heute ist super. Ja, okay. Wir am Ende dann mit der Strategie, die äh, mit unserer nicht vorhandenen Auskommen. Hm. Also ich schätze mal, Max, du musst noch quasi einmal voll tanken, ne? Ja. Also irgendwas zwischen 20 und 30 Liter. Aber keine Reifen mehr wechseln, ne? Da nur zum Schluss haben aufpassen, ne? Dann sind sie ein bisschen runter, die Reifen. Okay. Ich weiß noch nicht, ne? runter bis auf 76 okay. Prozent. Das niedrigste. Ja. Eine Gelbphase gab es nicht, ne? Nein. Nein. Jetzt okay. ist auch gerade die zweite Werbungsphase vorbei. Sollte eine kommen, Mac, ne? Mhm. Dann auf jeden Fall rein. Okay. Also es sei denn so, du hast den genügend Sprit bis zum Schluss. Mhm. Du, der Herr McLovin vor uns. Das ist ein großer Fun, aber... Oh, 
of them start to check up, as I kind of expected. They come up on some lap traffic. That's no way. That's actually our leader and the GTEs. So they got to be careful here when trying to overtake the one, two, four. The good news about when these guys catch a GT4 leaders is even though we've made a, a note that that has been a pretty close race today, all six or seven of them are fairly spaced out right now, so they shouldn't have to worry about those guys battling. Meanwhile, in the GTE class, Spencer Todd and Tom Huggin are battling for fourth place and ducking to the inside, the Evolve Sim Sports Titanium Machine. Feels like he fancies that P4. Yeah. E Sports holds the high side as they now head through the penny king. And once again, those bumps make it look so scary between the cars. Plunging long at 190 miles an hour here as they bounce around on two different parts of the banking. There we go. Looks like they're going to complete the pass. And they go by Nichols, our second place driver in the GT4 class. We've got a nice battle for fourth place in LMP2 as well. The uh, Grizzly Motorsports 48 and the 42 Devotion car running side by side as they enter the oval. As, uh, we were watching this battle a moment ago and it's back on. Indeed, they have uh, swapped positions briefly. Bides his time. He doesn't attack into the red aphelio. He just stays on the racing line. They still have at least one more pit stop that they need to execute in this class. So they probably are saving for good reason. Oh, and we got a caution. There is the caution. With they set the incident point limit low, I guess. Yeah. Probably about four. Now, for all of you fans, <laughs> yeah. for all of you fans wondering, well, why aren't they showing the reason for the caution? It's because it's not an incident point count. All we know the reason for the caution is probably a driver putting their wheels off and some grass. And just as they called that, Cameron Dance went by the safety car, which is uh, actually just behind him. So Dance is having to slow up a, a severe amount here on the overbanking, waiting for that car. So, this is an interesting point in time for uh, pretty much all classes, because even the LFP2s could potentially pit and gain a significant amount of time from it. But obviously, GTEs and GT4 they pit now, and they have to pit, uh, because we're well inside the 50 minute mark. But for the LMP, uh, for the GTEs, once they get round for the pit lane to go. I want to add on that, Stefan. It's interesting for every class because the track is so long. Every class has a bunch of cars still on the lead lap. Exactly, that, that as well on top. Uh, for the LMP2s, it's going to be right interesting left, because we might see a little bit of uh, split uh, decisions here because uh, some people might pin in and go, all right, we have to make a pit stop nonetheless uh, uh, from now this point out. out. Or, so uh, go into pit wow. lane, take that pit stop right now. Yes, we get that track position, but that means we are going to have to feel less at their last stop that we have to make. So, uh, people are gonna really crunch the numbers now. What can we do? What shall we do? Team Iris is probably one of the best positions right now uh, because they did save a lot of fuel, um, so they don't have to fuel as much. And if the people right ahead of them also go to pick up with them, 
And they just chomped them in the middle lane because they have the advantage of saving that fuel. By the way, they really had to slow down just now for the uh, Q. Uh, the end of the Q there for our uh, brother yep. behind the scenes. Just yeah. 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 a little bit of uh, interesting okay. because they had to go three wide to avoid it. Steht denn da ja, irgendwas, äh, dass du... Catch, uh, also die Box war die dann offen? Ja. Okay. Stand da auch da, ne? Box war ja. Ich glaube, ich habe es aktuell. So, sie müssen nur die Kette auf 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 die Kette And, yeah, and the fact that we have a smaller field than normal, 33 cars, you know, if, if there is a driver who gets caught out, um, you know, has a bad uh, run or finds himself at the tail of the game, they won't have as hard of a job as what they normally do trying to navigate their way back up through the field, especially because you go, you know, that down the long straight into the first breaking zone, and it, even though the... the Even though when the safety car peels off, they'll be racing on the road course portion, there's plenty of places where the any LMP2 or GTE cars that find themselves stuck at the back should quickly be able to find their competitors back up front. Now, to counter that, that though, that, that's only if drivers behave on the overall portion on the restart. Uh, because, I mean, <laughs> if everybody fans out, it's not that wide of a track through that part. So. They've all kind of, it's, I almost wonder if they need to start communicating with each other and say, well, the GTEs take the middle, GT4s take the low line, and, and LMP2s take the high line, just so that nobody miscommunicates and runs into each other. Looks like uh, just about got everybody on there now. So, I'm, 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 sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna put, my, put, put myself quite far out the window and say Vinci will not get affected by this car. Yeah. Whatsoever they have way too much speed over the field uh, to really be in danger here, losing much. Unless they get really bad traffic, and I'm, I'm talking here solely about the Athena car because the Iris obviously is the first man line. Um, so. Um, these guys most definitely might be a little bit in the danger zone of losing that second place, but apart from that, they just have uh, too much pace to really be here in danger whatsoever. Um, it's going to be a little bit more interesting with the GTE battle because we still have the top three on the same lap here. And these guys have very similar speeds, and if they actually somehow get out together, um, these three will most definitely be out for a fight in the last about 15 minutes that are still left, yeah, 45 minutes that are still left in the race. And obviously everything is still wide open in that GT4 class because the cars, these are not, are still on the lead And the one is really something else into the mix here, and that's that we're probably about to have every single car on pit road. Well, it's a narrow pit, pit road. Now you can go through pit stalls, but not on pit lane itself. There is a potential for collisions, so hopefully we won't see too much of that. Oh, but Dance fakes him out. He decides to stay out. I don't think this is the good call. Yeah. I was just thinking about it. This caution is going to go for a while because they already announced they're going to extend it one lap longer than normal. So by the time we get going racing, it'll be what? Maybe about 30 minutes left? Maybe a little more? Yeah, perhaps the drivers are good. Uh, Roman Grosjean was not stopped on pit entry, so everyone taking advantage here back towards the field. I can tell you, Jordan Johnson, the driver who set the pole time in GT4, has gotten behind the wheel of a lead GT4 car. But you mentioned Grosjean's uh, actually a It's good enough to make it to help prepare him. Just a handful of cars have stayed out here. Who's behind them? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just thinking now. I, I don't think um, I said that the 
and safe behind us. And that was Fitzy. Way we're gonna win today's race is by outsmarting Fitzy on the stretch, which, if you know them, is also a very hard thing to do. And this is right, what I meant because. Uh, first and second stayed out, now obviously they have a massive advantage in track position, possibly a massive advantage because they have such a large fuel load. So it is kind of an interesting thing what happens from this point out, because obviously we know that the cars they have to pit in three, four laps time. Uh, and the others? Might still need a splash dash. So I think still everything is on the line. Fitz has to be potential perfect from here on out. They're not allowed to put one pixel off the car road. Otherwise they might have just lost this race right here right now. Well, the 59 and the 68 and the X and B race design car at the number 3 retro team also elected to stay out. Dance and Trocene are on a 10 laps right now. Well, uh, unfortunately, Stafford is the one who's been out the longest 12 laps on his, so he'll have to come in a little bit sooner than the others. What about, we've been focusing so much on these... Uh, uh, LMP2 cars. It's a little bit more straightforward, naturally, for the GTE and GT4 cars. And pretty much everybody came in there, except it looks like the 896 and the 26 did not come in. Yeah, not everybody. I think also the Porsche stayed out there, so it was actually 50-50 in the GT4 field. Which is strange, because as you mentioned, they can make it to the end. Although, uh, maybe uh, are these the cars that almost made it to halfway during the first stint? Yeah, the GT4s made it nearly to the middle part of the race. So, like I said earlier, a caution could make it so that they could get to the end without a pit stop. You know, I still don't think they can, but what they might be thinking here is use the track position that they have now to pull away from the rest of their competitors and then just come in for a splash of fuel with a couple of laps to go. Yeah, that's a good point, because they'll have a whole bunch of GTE and LP2 cars between them now. Murphy Nichols is the only car that stayed out as well as Jack Jack, he was in pit lane just uh, two laps before the caution mm -hmm. came out. He is right now on lap three of the stint. And Murphy Nichols, he is on lap seven of the stint. He was the only car, uh, oh, he was one of two cars that made it that far into the first stint. He was only five minutes out of the point. My concern is that the, the tires on the GT4 seem to have a pretty big impact on what I've seen in the past. Yeah, yeah but it's great news for the 26 and uh, they uh, kind of knocked it out in two laps before the yellow peak because let's not forget that's the car that lost the connection earlier. So boy, what a story that would be if they come back from that to win that class. Definitely on the right strategy. Yeah, they, they should be pretty good to go. If anything, uh, the Gridlight Fire Racers bombshell team is probably in perhaps the worst position. But we did mention there's going to be a lot of cars between them, so there's going to be a decent sized gap. It might come down to how fast they can be at the end to try and hold back the field. Now, uh, the lights, I believe, are still on on the pace car. Yes, they are. Yeah. Uh, I, ju I just want to include on that GT4, uh, because there's just one more big problem for uh, the Gridlock Pirates and Pirates of the Racing Team and the list Apex F1 podcast team. Thanks, not just that. That's the thing, um, and, and, uh, the, 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 thing the problem that they have is that 20. Uh, six car, no, sorry, that 178 car, the CMS Racing.com Team 1 team has one guy in that goes by the initials of JJ. It's John, Trump's, uh, John Johnson, and he put that car on board by White. Mm. Tense. 
That's a good point. Well, the one thing I love about this is it does mean that everything is going to be pretty unpredictable. And Cameron Dance is coming in this time. Ah, there's the game. There's the game. Very smart game. It is an extremely smart game because they have just uh, they have just went so far that from here on out they are going to feel. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying, but the, if, if the drivers who pitted the lap before them are good on fuel as well, these guys are going to be suffering with track position. It's, it's. <laughs> but they, uh, we've seen them have better pace than everybody. I, I kind of think this is the right call. I think they feel confident so enough in their pace that they can chase them back down, and they'll be a lot safer on fuel, so they can push as hard as they need. Look back there, up behind of Cameronets and everybody. You see the other things that are in their pit, in that pit line? It's all LMP2s. They all know exactly what they're up to. There's only two LMP2s that are still out there. Chris Jelana and Shui Hates. No, the Brett Trocy as well. Trocy stayed out, so he's going to inherit the lead. Oh, yeah, Trocy also stayed out. Uh, that's a thing. Um, however, Trocy is on a lap number 11 of Piston, so I'm not sure why Brett didn't catch on on that. Uh, smart move, but that's right. Trocy will have the honor of leading at least a lap here in this race once we go back to green flag. Uh, I didn't get it out. If he's, if he's enough and that's not the stint, he must be thinking that no one can make it to the end anyway. Uh, you know, you know, there's there's different theories, different thoughts here. We've already expressed some of ours in the uh, in the commentary booth, and I'm sure there's plenty down there on the racetrack as well. We knew the answer. The last 36 minutes wasn't going to be worth watching. It's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. Scene's got what uh, about three more laps once we go green that uh, he can run. I'm going to so that the Marco. Just time, so it's going to be three laps. Under all the gold four laps. Um, it's, it's about uh, 6.5 meters of lap that you use here. Pit lane is open. Oh, uh, was that there? Um, so if if he might have been able to save enough fuel because of this car. I still have four to five laps in this tank, but that's about as far as it is. I wonder if he may opt to pit when he goes green. Uh, yeah. it, granted, we just have one car pink out there. Uh, granted, yes, yeah. it, you're still yeah, going to lose more time than you would zurück. if you had pit under caution, but you might not lose as much time as you would in a lap or two when everyone is racing at full speed. True, but I still don't feel like it's the optimal strategy. I, I, I still think the Pitstye guys have, have called this one. Uh, just some information would maybe help that, though. Six minutes was the last pace lap for Brett Trocy. Uh So when we go green, we are going to be at under a half an hour left. I'm pretty certain that most of, if not all, of the should be good to the end. It'll just be more of a question mark to those who hit on the first half of the lap. How many cautious left did we have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's been so far ago since we yeah, got that like, yellow yeah, flag. Like, I don't know. Like, well, they, they've already extended, they they already extended the caution, so they said they'd only do it once. So I think, yeah, I think so, we should be going uh, back green. We have Team R Racing and Evolve on a lab that they have put on already. Um, Turning, I can smell the smoke. It, it doesn't matter, but I think they are really turning. Steph is trying it's to suss something out here. It is the, the yeah. question of how much fuel. Yeah, how did we. In that well, one lap. Let's try to work that out. I, I know, back to that GT4 fight uh, like to the finish. <laughs> I'm pretty certain that with as long as this caution is gone, Sam, I, I think I would side on the, the go for the side that the 896 should be able to get the end. Yeah, 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 no, I agree with that. The other concern that you have, of course, is that this, this is a timed race. So we say there's 33 minutes left. Well, there might be 35, 36 minutes left. Good point. 
Yes, uh, and it's a long lap. And they so, up doing it to give you a new uh, well, and they, they give could wind up with well. an extra three minutes if you're one of the uh, GT4 Weird. drivers. So will they be going here into the oval? Great. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Oh, as they already. go under the oval one more time. Strangest I mean, figure of eight tracks that you would probably have placed, that? Uh, constructed, but it is technically oh, a figure yeah, eight. That's, 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 uh, it's a figure it's eight, it's a clockwise track, it's a counterclockwise track, it's no, an overall and it's a very course. It rewards high speed, it also rewards downforce in the turns. Yeah, it has it just a little bit of everything. It's almost, I mean, it's, it's sort of like a fantasy track that they would have built today, but instead they decided to build it uh, almost 100 years ago. Meanwhile, we're getting ready to go, and uh, it's not Trocene who will be leading the way. The, the pace car has Murphy Nichols, our lead GT4, up as the front car. So, as the 896 waits for him to enter, should be pretty soon here. There he goes. Nichols has control, and he is off. Green, oh, I thought he was off. Now we're going. Green flag is out as everybody starts to pick up speed, and there goes Brett Trocene. He did not pit that time. Oh, but he barely gets to the inside of that three-wide situation. Peter Vostrel, who was trying to get his lap back, made that a little sketchy. about Team iRacing and all of this. They have managed to work their way up to third and actually chasing down Jimmy Haynes. Number six, he's got no answer for the seven easily through. I wonder if that has something to do with some of the setup of the cars. We did hear earlier that a few of them decided, decided to have the dive planes on the LMQs and a few decided not to. quicker but look at this as the LMP2s are all having to weave in and out through the field this is a fight for uh, the fourth position oh no they're going to come together a big shunt and that's going to send him into who was that one of our GTE cars Warring. Andrew Warring was that our leader oh no the Evolve Sim Sports SPV car just a complete innocent victim in that. One of the Team Fitzy Motorsports cars is still sitting there down at the chicane of 77. Wow. That, you just cannot tell what is going to happen in racing. If we take a look at the replay, unfortunately some braking, and that was a lapped car, I believe. Is a switch it car, I want to say? Yeah, that was the switch it took us right there and then shoved into the back of well, What this has done has allowed Retro Scene to pull a gap over the rest of the field of about four and a half seconds. Christian Challoner, the next one behind him. But it looks like Brett is not pitting this lap. He's going to keep going. See how long he can stretch it. He did have, I mean, he did have multiple laps under caution. So he might actually be able to go more than the 15. I wonder if it'll stretch out to 16 even. Yeah, and um, I'm going to lean myself quite out the window here and say that everybody that hasn't played with the Fitzy cars is going to have uh, and a lot of special dash. Something happened to the zone here. Is he is eighth in class. Did he get tripped up? No, this was a lone car incident. Just as the clouds came out. Thankfully, he didn't hit anything. 
But as we take a look at Cameron Dance, he's fighting side by side with Saranza. This is place the gap up to the next car. It is 16 and a half seconds. And that seems to think everybody who hit it early is going to have to come in one more time. They're certainly not racing like it here. Saranzo. Oh, no, actually, he's on the same strategy as Dance, so he should be able to push hard. Yeah, the only cars that are not on the same strategy is in Baltic Sports. Trazin has gone off. Trazin just went off at Delavision, loses the lead. Ooh, and this was completely his own fault. Outbraked himself, took to the escape runoff. Didn't hit the sleeping policeman, though, so saved himself from the damage on the under tray. A little too eager pushing. So for the first time this race, Team iRacing is leading the way. Is that actually the first time in any of the races they are going to lead the lap? That might be a correct stat. We'll double check on that. If they manage to win this one starting from the back, I suspect that uh, they're going to continue this strategy for the final round. What a story. As he comes around and officially leads a lap now, does Tracine hit? No, he stays out. And now that all of the um, field has kind of untangled itself, the LMP2s have pulled away from the GTEs, who have pulled away from the GT4s. Finally getting a good look at the GT4 leaders. It's still Nichols driving the 896, but he's being caught by about a second a lap by that 26 car. We've lost the connection earlier, but it's coming back fast. And this does not look good for the 896 team because Waddell has got the fire lit under him as they come around. Last lap was about three minutes seven for Waddell. And it was three minutes one point to two seconds for Nickel. We're gonna watch from Jack's perspective. We'll get another lap time here as they cross the line to start lap 49. Nichols this time through a 257-4. Compare that to the 26, a 257 flat, four tenths of a second quicker. And he only has a second and a half to make up with 25 minutes to go. Five seconds behind these two persons, so he's definitely still in it as well. Um, obviously, they will have to deal with the LMP2 cars and GE cars coming back on them by the end of the race. If you want to keep up the live time in these closing moments and have a feeling it might be quite helpful for you, you can go to gsrc.tv. Uh, speaking of drivers gaining, Cameron Dance, even with the battles that he went through, is down to 12.4 seconds. His last lap, a 2.26.4. The next one up is Joey Haynes. It was a 2.29.8. He was three seconds quicker than that Evolve Sim Sport Obsidian machine. Yeah, and by the way, he just caught up about five tenths to first place alone up to this point in time from the start of this lap. So Cameron Dance most definitely on a flyer with all the fighting you'll have to do to get past the fence. Absolutely. Well, and we still don't know if Challoner can manage to take that number seven all the way to the finish because he was one of the ones that pitted a lap My before. Cut last and time, that's it's not in the box. If it? it is extremely tight on fuel, he's going to run out before Cameron will. Man, he is absolutely hustling this thing. Watching him go through the chicanes from on board shows just how aggressive he's willing to be. Trocene, in the meantime, was only able to make it to lap 57. And he is going to have to pit to take it to the finish. Now, let's see. Last time the lead lap is the Bevesis number 77. The GT4 lead is off. Nichols has overcut Lesno 1. The Missed Apex F1 podcast team has gone into the lead of GT4. Wow, so it wasn't an actual pass on track that gives it to him. It was a mistake from the Grid Life team. Let's take another look at it. Yeah, to be fair, uh, he had yeah, made this a mistake. I think he was a sitting duck sooner than later. He was definitely forced into it. He realized the pressure was coming from behind. Just completely overdrives the corner. Remember, those tires are probably pretty worn out by this point. So 
That certainly didn't help it. If he makes a little mistake, it was all the more exacerbated. XMB and a car back to Schmeier. And indeed, that is our third place driver already in the mix. Here we cut back to a nice battle here in MMP2. This is coming off of the banking. Statler to the inside. Or to the outside, rather. Soranzo to the inside. Coming down to the breaking before the chicane. It looks like Soranzo will fit the ball. No, but he's wide at the second. Apex manages to get the power down well. Beautiful job by the 42. That will get him fourth place. That gap from Dance to Haynes now down to 9.2 seconds between them. Challenger. Back to our GT4 leaders. Adele is going to tow along Nichols. He may have lost the lead, but he's obviously going to use the slipstream to his best advantage. If he can hold on to that, this win could still be on. Yeah, Nichols mm -hmm. needs to try and take the lead here mm -hmm. because he runs a risk right now of whether he'll pull away on those faster tires. But these two battle, if they go side by side through Metafilio, that will allow Johnson to just run them both down and see which one of these two comes out on top. Breaking hard, and Nichols, despite the worn tires, is pretty brave on the brakes, but he can't get by him. And look at how much Johnson gains in that. What was one of the car lines is nothing. Johnson, yeah. Johnson, yeah. now needs to, he's, he's won his race over the 826. Now he needs to hope that the 826 holds up Johnson as much as possible. Against either of them. I think this is going to be a slipstream race. We saw the Miatas over at Daytona recently uh, racing on the road course, and that came to a four wide finish. Could we see a three wide finish here in the Majors Team Endurance Challenge? I just don't see Nichols holding on. I, I know I know if he can hold on, he got back in the angle, but he's sliding around so much, I don't think that BMW is going to be able to handle 20 more minutes of that. With Johnson around the numbers and right now as we stand, Dance and Jelana continue with their pace dance for not and about 10 more laps in the lap here. So it's all it's all going to come down if Jelana has to be or not. But all I can tell you about that is that he's not safe. I think. Yeah, I think in about a minute, when we go back to those GT4 cards, Johnson will lead out of Retifelia. Meanwhile, we're watching the battle for fourth still. Soranzo and Statler used to have many LG2s around them, but it's all kind of broken apart in the middle of this pack, and it's left them to have a side-by-side -side fight, at least for the time being. Of course, we'll try and check in on Cameron Dance later, because so far his pace has implied that he will at least be fighting for second before the checkered flag flies. Down into Ascari, uh, Soranzo holds the advantage. But he still gives a little bit of a defensive line into there. Oh, we might actually want to go over to the lead yeah. the GT Force because they're side by side right now for a second. And I think you called it perfectly, Sam, that George Jones most definitely looking to get the first place for right now. 26 had to lift, let off, I think. He got down too low on the eighth when his car was sliding around and down. he loses all his momentum. The top two yeah, 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 blow, blow by him on the outside. Johnson's going to have a slick screen. We know he has much better tires. Who's going to be brave on the brakes? Oh, there's the answer to that one. And I think that was an answer we kind of expected. Johnson oh, no, 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 leads no, no, no. into Redifilio. There's your prediction. Come true. Nichols runs second, though, and Waddell uh, finds himself home to third. That's it. We're actually going to have Jelani. Uh, Jelani is for first place. Now, 
He has only about X Wing and Force UK Blood. You know this big difference between uh, those two classes, so he'll be on them in pretty much the point of that. Way too deep goes Nichols, and this could be bad news for everyone whose name isn't Johnson here. He's going to have to uh, serve a slowdown if a number 178 that can't get by. Job. That's just going to allow Johnson to run away. Sorry if a 26 can't get by. <laughs> so far, he's a nice the gap. I don't think this is enough to break them up completely. If they hold this distance to each other, I'm pretty sure they're going to still regain time. That battle between Sir Lonzo and Statler still good time, though. They're going to be side by side down into Della Rosa. Sir Lonzo once again has to play defense. Oh, but he's in deep. Here's the over under. As Statler tries to accelerate out, but unfortunately, there is an LMP2 car right in his way. And Sir Lonzo parks it perfectly. That's why he had to check up. We stay with the battle for fourth in the LMP2s between David Saronzo and Harold Statler. They pick up the pace once again. Coming upon our battle for the lead now. So remember, everybody's got their own motivations here as he almost chops it. Because uh, that Athena party right now second in the championship. Uh, Schade, it's only a few points. Uh, uh, how many points? Yeah. Second in the championship stage. Uh, so every place you can get right now uh, is really important. Yeah. 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 try to break the slipstream. Yeah, you were right about the GT4 battle, uh, Joe. They, they had spaced out by about two seconds or so, and then they accordioned back together by the time they got to the end of the over. So, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I've called yeah. enough of the Lotus 49 races here that I have a sense of uh, how powerful that slipstream can be along that long straight. This, this has been fantastic to watch. Soronzo once again covering off the inside down into Della Rosa. What's that, Got it down to one <laughs> second to Joey Haynes. You can see him up ahead. This is going to be for second place. Then from there, does Cameron's call the correct one, giving up the time, giving up the track position with a later pit stop to ensure he can get to the finish? Or did Christian Schellner call it right? Is he able to manage his fuel all the way to the end? He just started another lap as Dance is now within three quarters of a second behind Joey Haynes as he approaches through That's Parabolica. Up. He will absolutely have this slipstream coming through the oval portion. This remains Up along the high side, there goes Cameron Dance, easily into second place, past Joey Haynes of all number six. Haynes claws back in with the slipstream. He can attack back if he wants to, but does he? He's lifting. Side by side.
Fry coming through the banking. This is Toronto and Statler. Also, I can tell you that Haynes is trying to fight back as he goes side by side with Dance, but he breaks early. Dance still going to try and cover him off down into Redifilio, and he holds him off. Meanwhile, the other battle we're watching, Statler is ahead, and I think he's managed to finally overtake Soranzo. Go ahead. The change, the change for second in GT4. Oh, they're, they're almost hitting on the apex there, and that's going to cost Nichols some time. Take a look. I think they managed to avoid coming together. Yeah, well, this now means our two leaders in GT4 are the two on fresh tires. As Waddell, you can see how he's able to outbreak uh, his competitor down into the corner. Almost overshot it, though. There was nearly contact, but I don't think a hit. So still the top three uh, within drafting distance with 12 minutes left to go in GT4. Johnson in the CMS racing car leading the 26 of Waddell driving the Mist Apex car. And Murphy Nichols in third place right now on the old time. Uh, the 896 uh, life. Give, give a little bit of love to the 188 team who has been leading the, uh, the GTEs. That's James Walker. Is, uh, Jack Waddell here. Here's the 188. Took over for Kurt Crum. And really, ever since the restart, has held a significant lead over the next car back, which is the Fitzsai Motorsports 80s number 164. 18 seconds between them. This Corvette has pretty much got free reign to the end. And the, the kind of funny thing here is this is the first time the bombshell racing team did get screwed over by strategy. Uh, because mm -hmm. every other race could have been screwed over so massively by yeah. strategy that they even lost massive leads until uh, the end of the race. So uh, good on them to finally bounce back and have a good result, hopefully here, if uh, not to be wrong. You know, I do have to wonder if Challenger is having to save a little bit of fuel. Because he was two seconds slower than Dance. I guess Dance had the drop. On the uh, that's yeah, good point. Okay, thank you for that. <laughs> I, I started to wonder there. I was like, that be. So we uh, hopped on board there with Dance for a brief moment. So excuse me, on board with Christian Challenger, rather. Yeah, that, that really has split up. Uh, Dance has left Haynes in the dust easily. Yeah. So, uh, the evolved car is not going to be able to ride the coattails. The only battle left in the LP2s is for fourth. However, watching. since the start of this lap, Dance has already caught up 1.2 seconds. Okay, so let's watch it again because Dance was alone this time through. Oh yeah, now, he's, he's massively safe. Chalina is massively safe. Oh boy. And as they come around, let's see what the lap time is this time through. Christian Challenger across the line. 228.6. He's hitting marks consistently. So he did last time. And uh, Cameron Dance. Get the last three seconds. Wow. My. 
my goodness. Yeah, I'll tell you how he did it though. An LMP2 car got in between himself and the 26 uh, at Retrofibio last time and that kind of spaced them out and Johnson has just taken full advantage of that and used that to pull out this three second lead this time around on the road course. I think that might be game over for the GT4 win. It certainly looks like it. Of course, crazier things have happened. Nichols so. still trying to fight with Waddell in the meantime. With how much is safe in that LF2 car? He's, he's lifting a good two, three, four hundred meters before the actual break. Uh, I would really say that he has to say it, it looks like that. Remember the X and B team who tried it, a, a, an off strategy call. They have gotten a penalty for too many incidents. So we haven't mentioned it much, but at 20 incidents, you uh, are given a drive through, and it looks like X and B have suffered that here with less than 10 minutes to go. That drops them even farther behind of everybody else. gamble but it just didn't work out so what about this battle for second Dell still chasing Nichols as they've got our leader in the GTEs becoming involved in it there we go nice and easily pass them on the front stretch without too much hassle yeah well I think you said it there Joe it's a battle for second uh, John, Johnson's uh, pulled away and uh, Nichols has got second back now, but he has those much older tyres. But uh, you know what, he, he, he's been out here long enough now, he knows how fast his rival can go, he knows how fast he can go on those older tyres. So uh, that, that's going to be an advantage, I think it will be a side-by-side -side battle for second at the end here. And it has been 13 laps on the tyres for the 26, so I, I suspect they may have evened out by this point. That's possible. All right, Joe, I'm going to do math for you. Our okay. leader just crossed the line now with six and a half laps left. Uh, six and a half minutes left to go, so that means three laps left. Our overall leader. Yeah. 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 Uh, Christian Chowder actually Oh, yeah, my bad. I'm looking at the wrong piece, right? Okay. But just so yeah, I'm good at geography okay. and you're good at math. We'll, we'll leave it at that, okay? Let's <laughs> just really watch these two. So the round's going to be good. Yep, you're all back. That's the whole guy. That's Saranzo. Going to be overtaken. Almost shoved off the course there. Statler getting his elbows out to try and hold on to P4. You know, the, the, the thing still is for that P1 battle-ish that we don't really have but have. Um, Dad is not actually quick enough. He's starting obviously to gradually have to uh, catch up more and more and more as time runs out. So right now this is more of a battle of uh, Chalina versus the fuel he has to save because he is saving so passively that I'm starting to be convinced that he had to save about as much as a lamp of fuel. That is those six liters. So, um, it is going to be the question can Chalina save oh. fuel on this track or this, not? This is really good timing though. Look at the clock. Now we get an actual indication now that I know where the track is. He's going to hit the line with just under five minutes left. That means there's only two minutes, uh, two laps left to go in this race. Because he'll hit the start finish line pretty much a few seconds yeah. after the clock hits zero. Yeah, it's very tight. They crossed it about 4.50 left and it's uh, 2.26 laps, 2.27 laps. So yeah, it, it, it'll be awful tight. Uh, I think we're going to have a few laps, including this one, which is not good news for Challenger. If he has to go an extra lap, does, yeah. is he going to have to come in for fuel? The, the way he's racing, he has to do that extra lap. Uh, I think at this point, if he has to do it, he is out of fuel right now. 
and he has been slowing down a little bit too. He remember he was running consistent 28 sixes. It's been a 28 seven, and now a 27 nine. Oh, actually, no, excuse me, that's faster that time. So maybe he's feeling a little bit more confident that maybe that fuel is starting to look a little bit more safe. So it was the reverse of what I initially thought. This has been awesome here at the end. Bad news for the battle for second in the GT4s is that Nichols is now a second and a half back. If he continues to lose more time than that, can he get back to two seconds back? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, that, it's that's right on the edge. But Nichols lost a lot of that time due to the fact that uh, the, lap, the uh, faster cars were going by him. Really, for Nichols here, it's down to nailing Ascari. If he gets through Ascari well, I think he'll still be in within drafting range. I'm also watching Christian Jones actually coming up behind this group. And he might slap them before this is over. So they might have a lap less, actually, in the oh. 54. Uh. So I think that's called the one I think. This is a battle on screen for yeah. fifth between Minkler and Hill. That's the Evolve Sim Sport uh, Titanium and the Black Ball car. They're gonna once again have a little bit of a slipstream fight going through the old portion. And this is challenge just crossed the line now, so it is this is the white flag actually. It was two laps. Don't Boy. doubt my math. Yeah, well, here's the reason. It was a two minute 30, significantly uh, slower that time. I think he's trying to time it to that. That's a smart thing to do. He also caught a lot of traffic, but yeah, I definitely think uh, his team would have been on top of that and say, hey, you need to make sure you don't cross the line with more than 2.30 on the, uh, the clock. Seconds faster, five seconds faster just about. Uh, yeah. 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 He might be intentional. He might be able to go flat out now. Maybe. We don't know. This is going to be a big question mark for a lot of drivers. The car certainly looks fast here. Coming along. Yeah, maybe we should go on board. Let's see, see if we can hear him lifting the coaster. He did not lift the coaster. Yeah, there are only two cars on this lap that are going to be able to finish yeah. in the GTEs. 
Wow. So uh, this is easily going to be a cruise to victory for them and the Calvert Dynamics bombshell team, and then a cruise to second for the Texans fifth style. While that's going on, Nichols is tracking along out of a final turn. He started the last one in third to place in GT4, but he's going to finish fifth. Uh, Okay, but remember, he was that one who only did one me. stop. Vergleich zu den wow. Autos vor und hinter uns. About as tight as you dare. Weil wir haben ja, glaube ich, tatsächlich ein bisschen so we have to pay off in the end for him, unfortunately. <laughs> As we continue to watch James Walker, his teammate Kurt Crumb probably cheering him on. Aber, ja, wie gesagt, dass das Ding ist so, also wenn wir jetzt auf 6 gewesen wären. Good day at the office for this 188 team. Das ist die Frage, hätte, hätte, Fahrradkette, ne? Hast du das getroffen? Nein. Started this race. They exit out of the Parabolica. Cheers for the 188. Our Corvette wins today here at Monza, and that is the last of our three classes. So we're going to take a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. Stick around because we have more to come. Ich denke so, dadurch, dass du hier äh, bei der Majors bist, hast du auch Berechtigung bei der MTech zu fahren. Okay. Also ohne extra Kohle. Cool. Ah, ja. ja. ich sag mal so, auf jeden Fall die Reuterplatz. Ja. Also wir haben auf jeden Fall ja, das ist das Letzte, ne?
the number 75, the, the Black Tree Race Crew and GTEs, because he's got a little bit of a fight in his hands with Stevens now. Porsche chasing the Corvette. As Thomas looking left and right, he goes to the right side. He's got a little bit of an overlap, but he's early on the brake. Oh, so ghost contact between them is going to shove the Corvette off track. Uh, Silverdale in the number 75. That puts him up to 11th in class. And we just had the car go upside down. And we made a uh, pad 15. The pad 3 race crew car has rolled over. And it's getting going to get a lot of damage to the 75 Porsche. But it's back on its wheels and it can keep going.